Hi, I'm Veronica Vance. Coming up, we take you all over the D for a tour of fun winter activities. We check out the local art scene at the Hill Gallery in Birmingham, and then we enjoy the hot dancing and flavors of Vicente's Cuban cuisine, so stay tuned. Production funding for this program was made possible by the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau, driving tourism growth in Metro Detroit since 1896. More information is available at visitdetroit.com. be winter here in the D, but there are plenty of things to do, both inside and out, like in our surrounding communities of Metro Detroit, like right here in Northville, there are plenty of things to do. There's shopping, or you can drop into one of the many restaurants and coffee shops and spend a carefree day, or head outside and take advantage of all the recreational activities. And if you like to hit the slopes, we've got skiing too. Take a look. This is where all the runs yep. converge. Yep. This is the top of Pine Knob. Wow, out, you can see yep. that. Exactly. Right down there is downtown Detroit in that area. So a clear and, day, you can see Detroit? Absolutely. You can exactly. see the skyline of Detroit from here, no problem. This is the highest point in Oakland County. You can get to about 12 or 15 runs from where we're standing right here at the top of the okay. mountain. Uh, the blue runs, the more difficult runs, and of course the black runs are the most difficult runs. So there's a race hill, there's a mogul field, there's the wall, and several other, you know, uh, black or, or expert sort of runs that you can access from here, as well as the intermediate runs. This is my, this will be my next step. That's correct. <laughs> That's correct. Once you get comfortable with the beginner runs where we were this morning, we would take the chair and come on up here and this would be the run. And you see the bottom flattens out. So it's a nice, long, intermediate run. Okay. Nice and wide at the bottom. It's a beautiful place to practice. Now, if you want to stay indoors and shopping is on your mind, the Renaissance Center in downtown Detroit is full of stores to get lost in, from men's clothing to women's boutiques and everything in between. And they've got four screens which show first-run movies all in a contemporary and ultra-comfy setting. Some of my favorite things to do on a cold winter's day is to spend some time inside one of our uniquely Detroit museums and attractions. Like Puavik Pottery, it's the perfect place to get that Detroit vibe and don't forget to take home a little piece of Detroit. Well, you'll see that we actually use historic equipment to make our own clay. We make our own glazes and our artists use very, very much of the handcrafted technique that our founder, Mary Chase Perry Stratton, founded 101 years ago. This is a wonderful place to come and see what professional ceramic artists do for a living. It's a real nice snapshot on it. Teresa, this is beautiful. I love the color scheme. Isn't it and, great? And, you know, a question. Can you, besides being a work of art, you could, looks like you could actually use this. Oh, yes. The, much, much, much of what we sell is functional. This is meant to be used. It yeah. feels good in your hand. Yeah. You know, it, and, it, and look, she even has oh. it d designed in such a way so that you can you can hold your thumb there. And it oh, feels it's very comfortable. comfortable. Yes. Exactly. Again, see here's oh, a beautiful crystals. crystalline glaze. Yeah. Now, and so and this, this is area, functional. This, this is all functional. And this area changes then. Is yeah, it? Absolutely. We 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 restock our artist's work, gosh, probably every two months. Oh, so there's always, always something, something new. new to come and see. Yes. Yeah. Now Detroiters love history, whether you're talking about the auto industry, art, culture, science, politics, or engineering. We've got museums and attractions that cover it all and make for a great educational as well as fun way for you and the family to get out and explore. One of my favorite exhibits is the Heroes of the Sky exhibit at the Henry Ford. Said you wanted to walk on the wing of a plane. Yeah, I do. I'm here. Here you go, right here. Oh. Nice and close to the pilots. So oh, all the safe, wind. And you've got the wind in your hair. This and you can neat. lean out a little bit, let go of the. I you've think got, this would be you've fun. Got this down pat. As long as you're strapped yeah. on. All right. Uh, Should we see what else is in store for us in the exhibit? Yeah. Let's go. We're in the inventor zone, and this is where you meet. People like the Wright brothers and mm -hmm. Igor Sikorsky. Igor Sikorsky. Sikorsky is actually a great testament to the spirit of inventors. Oh, okay. It took him 30 years to perfect his aircraft, his helicopter. After trying multiple different ways, it was a success. So 
now, if you want to stay on the science track, you've got to head on over to the Cranbrook Institute of Science. As an Institute of Science, we take the scientific approach to studying those things and we help you not only understand it, we actually help you do it. We have a lot of material that's a great deal of fun for children and their parents and their friends to come because they can look at it, they can see different things, and they can talk about it. And that's part of the excitement of, of, of a museum is where you get to have that sort of social discussion about the objects you see. The entire area would probably be about uh, 45,000 square feet. But of course, it's laid out in circles and paths and patterns, and you can double back and forth on it. So just to see what we've got, if they didn't even want to take an opportunity to go in and see live bats or to watch one of the most exciting planetarium shows or to go down and see some of our always changing, exciting, if it's brought from all over the world, mm -hmm. they probably would need to devote about an hour and a half to it. Of course, history includes some of the worst in human behaviors, but the worst of these can hopefully inspire and teach us to never allow these atrocities to happen again. The Holocaust Memorial Center in Farmington provides a deeply moving experience, and it's a super important museum to visit. When the war was brought to a close and the liberators came into the camps with the media mm -hmm. and photographs, the world could no longer deny what was going on. So this is again showing the, the liberation. Well, what the liberators found when they came into the camps. So when we leave the abyss, we then... We're, we're walking up out of the darkness okay, feel towards good. this memorial flame, which we like to think of as a symbol of hope. Well, Donna, this is again a very powerful ending. The uh, numbers of murdered Jews in each country is mind-boggling. Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, Donna, thank you. Thank you very Thank you enlightening for work. Come yes. again. I will. These are just a few suggestions on ways to spend a cold winter's day in the D. But the main thing is to think of the D as a great playground, regardless of the weather. So bundle up, get on out there, and discover all the D has to offer. Hey, if you're looking for culture in the D, we've got a ton of art. If you're like me, walking into an art gallery can be a little intimidating, but we were at the Hill Gallery in downtown Birmingham where they're dispelling the notion that it needs to be. It's basically like coming into a museum where they really want you to appreciate their contemporary fine art and their great American folk art. Hi, I'm Pam Hill, and I am the uh, co-director, along with my husband, Tim Hill. I want to give you a tip about something that's going on in Birmingham, and that is the public art 
which we call here Cityscapes. And we have on display nine pieces of outdoor sculpture that you will enjoy, and it's there to be seen by you. Oh, it was okay that I did that. Now for this, you need a really big wall. Well, so Pam, tell me a little about the Hill Gallery. I mean, is it intimidating? It's intimidating to somebody who doesn't know a lot about art. But you're welcome to come in and take a look around, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, that notion of being, uh, feeling like one is intruding when they go into a gallery or feeling like, well, because they're not a buyer, maybe they shouldn't come in. Uh, that is absolutely the opposite of the reality. The reality in a gallery is that the works in the gallery, any gallery, are made by artists who really, really want to have people look at their work. Most of what we have right now, these are all uh, highly recognized, uh, really internationally known artists. It's kind of a way to kind of share, you know, the power of uh, national American art with our local audience. This is sort of unusual. What are we standing next to here? Uh, this piece is made by an artist whose name is Jean Heinstein, a New York-based artist. And Jean deals with um, simple shapes, uh, but the, com the making of the pieces are very complex, mm -hmm. and the fact that it is floating in space. It's, it's weightless. So how a piece of art is presented has a lot to do with our response to it. Mm. I know what I'm thinking about, wonder what she's thinking about. I'm thinking about why am I standing like this? <laughs> have a, a mixture of contemporary art, but then you also have folk art in here, correct? That's right. Um, so right here, uh, this is a piece that comes out of the field of American folk art. folk art. Father Time is a symbol that we see, you know, all the time. And Father Time here, who is uh, pointing down to Earth, and he's suggesting that uh, morality and uh, ideal behavior should be now because the symbol of death, this scythe, uh, mm. is saying, look, your life may not be forever. So this is a great example of folk art, but mm -hmm. behind us, this mm -hmm. is an awesome contemporary piece. This piece is by a very important American sculptor, Mark de Suvero. Uh, and Mark uh, does large-scale works. He's in museums all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and his work, some of Mark's pieces actually get up to 72 feet in the air. Mm -hmm. This would be a small piece, This is, uh, but it's an exquisite piece. So what we have is uh, cut steel that looks like it's easy to do. It's very difficult to cut steel. And then we have this element at the top that spins. And then we have another element above that also moves. So we basically have a double motion going on. So we've got some lovely stainless steel here. Behind me, we've got Anne. And I'm thinking about going pink, too. So what do we have here? One very abstract piece, and then one piece that certainly is quite different. Can you explain the the dynamic, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, and again, this is a, a kind of juxtaposition or a placement that Tim and I really like to do in the gallery because we like to show how things are somewhat similar and how they're very different. So in this case, uh, the similarity is color, and so we have you know red, green, white, blue, mm -hmm. and the same red, green, white, blue happening over here. Right. And uh, but this is a uh, really exceptional example of a Native American Sioux Indian vest, and this would have been done uh, right around 1890. Oh, wow. And uh, we have uh, the really beautiful reduced geometry that you find in Native American design. Michael Goldberg is uh, creating uh, like a cacophony of form. He's putting together shapes and colors and shifting moments that uh, suggest, uh, well, if you're looking or listening to music, this would be like uh, 
jazz at its wildest. Mm. Veronica, I want you to see this collection of American whirly gigs that we're showing. Whirly gigs? Yes, these are whirly gigs. And the idea of a whirly gig comes from the whirly. And the whirly <laughs> is the fan blade, the like windmill blade that actually would create the energy to move the figures. So whirly gigs are also animated. This is Philip Perlstein. He's an American Expressionist. Uh, Philip is in over 65 museums. Wow. At just about every museum you can name owns at least one Philip Perlstein. There's an abstraction and there's a lot of realism in Philip's work. Well, Pam, thank you so much. Thank you. It's my pleasure. I loved it. You've been so informative and so educational. Thank and you. the Hill Gallery really is making art accessible to everyone. Great job you're doing. Thank here. you. And we hope to have lots of visitors. There are plenty of things to see and do in Metro Detroit this month, and our calendar of events is up next to point you in the right direction. Catch Robocop the Musical at City Theater, and the Outdoor Rama gets you ready for the great outdoors and lakefront living. Hear pop and rock music performed on two cellos, and the Autorama is a hot rod and custom car fan's paradise. To learn of any changes, log on to visitdetroit.com or call 1-800-DETROIT. We're downtown Detroit at Vicente's Cuban Cuisine, a lively hotspot where they've got flamenco dancing, flamenco lessons, salsa dancing, salsa lessons, and best of all, authentic Cuban cuisine. Well, Vicente, I love the look of the restaurant. Well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> it, so this is an authentic Cuban restaurant. It is. I was born in Cuba, and these are my mom's recipes, and Chef Roberto Caceres brought the Spanish influence into our restaurant, and mm -hmm. we tried to make it as tropical as we could by doing a 1920 Art Deco build out, which is the heydays of Cuba, the heydays of Detroit. Yeah. So that's where we got the uh, pineapple and olive colors around the restaurant, the Cuban flags, and the murals back from the 1920s. And that mural from Cuba, that was a picture I brought back from Cuba. Really? And I had a muralist paint it. Our mission of our restaurant is to share the Cuban experience with the Detroit metro area. Mm -hmm. You should be able to come in here and know what it tastes like, sounds like. You should be able to dance to it. I've actually brought the Cuban Dinner Club back into the mainstream where there's dancing, entertainment, flamenco dancers, uh, DJs, live bands, and dinner. Well, Vincente, you want to show me around? Absolutely. I'd love to. This is our bar here, and I take, took this bar, these are all our customers, <laughs> and I've taken this bar from a 1920 Art Deco book. So this was a 1920 Art Deco bar, our wall of Bacardi up there, Bacardi, Bacardi as Americans okay. would call it. <laughs> so what, what's a Cuban specialty drink? Mojitos are very popular in Cuba. I take nice my mother. muddler and I, mu I muddle the limes. We use, of course, Bacardi, Bacardi. from the Bacardi family that left Cuba around 1957. And we just fill it up depending on how you look. I might fill it up a little bit more. Oh my. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mojito oh, gold. Little shot of soda to kind of freshen it up. Straw. This mint comes from Colombia to Eastern Market every mm -hmm. every three days. Oh, so this so is all from Eastern Market. This is from Eastern cool. Market and this is Colombian mm -hmm. mint. Okay. Actually has a little float of Myers rum on the top. I'll give you that little extra alcoholic shot that everybody likes. <laughs> so this right here is a mojito oh, taste. Beautiful. So as you bring the mojito up to your face, the mint and the lime kind of mm. opens up like your pores. And yeah. you, isn't that pretty good? It's very good. Uh -huh. Tonight, the flamingo dancers are going to dance up and down. And they wear their Spanish outfits, and yeah. they have the guitar player back in the stage here, and it's awesome. Oh, and then yeah. after that, we turn into a salsa club with the salsa DJ. We remove all these tables, okay. and we remove all the chairs by the bars, and this becomes a nightclub. Yeah. And everybody salsa dances in. And do you have to know what you're doing, or do you We teach you, you on Fridays. Fridays, we, we give you a lesson that. at 10 p.m. Well, we've got our drinks, we've right got on. our dancing. Right now, on. I want to sample the food. Let's do it. Okay. All right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
what we've been served. Uh, this is seafood paella. paella. This is one of our most popular dishes from our chef Roberto Caceres. Beautiful. Isn't that Beautiful. awesome? He is one of the only chefs in this area that can cook a true baked Spanish paella, which has lobster, clams, oysters, mussels, shrimp, baked in this saffron rice with capers and, you oh know, lemons. And, wow. Yeah, wow. isn't that awesome? Wow, wow, yeah. It's really good, and this is a uh, paella for two. Okay. And this is one of our most popular dishes. I'm going to give you the first piece of the lobster. Oh, I get the lobster With your rice. Tail. See right. the shrimp, the scallops. Yeah. I got to give you a clam, mm. couple mussels. Mm. Oh, there my. you go. Probably the biggest shrimp I've ever oh, seen in my, my life. Oh my goodness, look at the size of that shrimp. Oh my saffron goodness. rice, mm. isn't that awesome? Oh, this is spectacular. Mm. So you taste oh the saffron goodness. rice. Oh, this is outstanding. Oh, now these are beautiful. What do we have here? Veronica, this is our Cuban pear salad with the greens, the tomatoes, yeah. green peppers, uh, cherries. There's walnuts in there. And those are fried pears. Mm. Perfect for vegetarians in Detroit. Wow. Oh, and this one right good. here is the salmon on top of the greens with all the cucumbers around it. Mm. This is one of our famous tapas. Okay. So this is a dish that you pass around throughout the whole table. Like an appetizer. An then. appetizer, exactly. Okay. And then there's one more, which is queso de cabra, which is goat cheese on top of tomatoes with the crushed red pepper sauce. Perfect to dip your bread in. And this yet is another appetizer that you pass around the table. Okay, so the this sauce, is sharing. The, the sauce is really good, which is your raspberry sauce that goes on top of your pear this salad. goes on top of the pear yep. salad. Okay, yep. so we put a little bit on here. Yeah. Now this is a fried pear. Mm. Isn't that oh. awesome? Sweet. Yep, yep. Oh, it's very good. Mixed greens are like in the inside. See okay. Them? There you go. Mm. Isn't that awesome? Wow, that's I'll have to really grab my good. Fork here. I know I love this one. Goat cheese on top of tomatoes with the crushed red pepper sauce. There you go. Mm. Isn't that awesome? Ooh, exactly. It's got a little kick to it. And Very this good. Is, this is called queso de cabra. Mm, yummy, yeah. yummy. So, Veronica, I think it's time for a shot of our port. Yes. So, we believe that at the end of a high carbohydrate meal, mm -hmm. you should have a shot of Spanish port. And let's try this out. It's a dessert wine. Okay. And we believe it's got the right amount of sugar and alcohol to help digest your food. It's good for your cardiovascular system. And I guarantee that will get you up on the dance floor salsa dancing. No <laughs> okay. doubt in my mind. Cheers. Cheers. All you take is a little sip of it, Veronica. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, Ooh, isn't that refreshing? That goes down nice, that yes. It does go down nice. It's not, not very heavy. Nope, no, very light. <laughs> All right, my favorite part of the meal, dessert. All right. <laughs> you know, what do we have? These are three of our, one, uh, three of our famous desserts. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we're a cuisine and everything is made in our kitchen. Okay. So this is our traditional Cuban flan. Mm. Yep, it's got a candy coating on it with a little bit of mango sauce. Mm. This mango is our, our, our mango cheesecake. And this is our chocolate layer truffle with chocolate mousse in it, mm. and it is incredible. Well, I, I'm a cheesecake expert, uh, so... Then you're going to have to try our <laughs> uh, my chef's uh, mango cheesecake. Mango cheesecake. I'm going to have the flan. Okay. okay, good. I might have a little bit of all. Okay. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Why don't you taste this? Wow. All right. Mm. That is a Cuban flan. Isn't that mm. awesome? Wow, really got beautiful presentation. The different sauces here. It's got a caramel sauce, a chocolate sauce, and a mango sauce. Oh, that's heavenly. Take it home. Mm. Isn't that awesome? Oh my goodness, that's yeah. so good. Cheers. Awesome. Mm. It's good stuff, isn't it? Perfect ending to a perfect meal. Now we just well, have got you. our nerves up and we're going to be thank dancing you. later, that's right? right. Okay. That's right. That's <laughs> right. participation where everybody gets up and they're going to teach them a quick number. You're a flamingo dancer now. Good. <laughs> so you're up, Mr. 
some tasty Cuban cuisine, sexy dancing, and family fun. Presenting has brought Cuba a little closer. Adios. that's our show. Thanks for watching. I'm Veronica Vance. And remember, if you would like more information on any of the places we visited, log on to visitdetroit.com. So until I see you next time, go out and explore on your own and discover the D. To learn about discounts and special offers for featured attractions, plus how to get copies of Visit Detroit magazine, click on visitdetroit.com. Production funding for this program was made possible by the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau, driving tourism growth in Metro Detroit since 1896. More information is available at visitdetroit.com.